Hey, Nation Nation, Harry here on the hottest day of the year. It's the dog days of summer in Seattle, Washington. Nothing finer. Um, probably over 90, yeah, 90, 90 degrees, which is hot for us. Let me tell you. And Michael Frazier in Seattle, he uh, just told me he put an air conditioner in or a portable air conditioner. Um, so I, I get it. Uh, Michael, you're the only thing standing between me and my afternoon bike ride to go cool off with the ocean breeze. So um, let's have a little bit of fun. Like I say, it's the dog days of summer. Welcome back from Refractor. You've got the hot hand and uh, I'm hopeful it, a cool office. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely cool, thankfully. Yes, yes, AC. Right. Needed to get that portable AC. Can't, can't, uh, you, uh, I think all of us in Seattle melted 85 degrees unless we have AC, so. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. The homes up here weren't built with AC in general, and we could go on. Uh, hey, want to have some fun? Um, it's not lost on me this last 30, 60 days. You've been using your summer to really improve your marketing. I'm looking off screen at your LinkedIn profile, which is just uh, one place I can see your content cadence. I see you have a new avatar, a, a, a character, a redhead with a cape characters. So let's start at the high level and then we'll double click down into some very specific stuff. But uh, why? What, what, what What's going on? Something happened a month or two or three ago. What's going on? Yep. So we um, actually kind of put a full port press on, on marketing. We hired a new marketing director. And so our whole goal was to kind of not, not just push on the marketing front, but I'm doing a lot more thought leadership. So a lot of talks, I think I'm doing two to four talks a month on top of, we have some campaigns around education. So we have word of the week where we have a unique word. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Word, yeah, word, yeah, word of the week. <laughs> yeah, word of the week <laughs> or, or term of the week. Um, but we have that every week now that's coming out. And so we're really keen on helping organizations kind of be, get educated in what we're doing. And I'm seeing a massive uptick just in interest in this area around, you know, uh, CI/CD automation, DevSecOps. Um, even some of the talks that I've done recently, um, they've increased 50% talk over talk on uh, on attendance. Where one of my last talks was the most highly attended talk in the entire uh, event, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah, and and again, sticking at the high level. Uh, this stuff works, and, and, and as you know, I've I've been trying to carry the flag for a long time. We had a, uh, I'll, I'll call it a startup. It's a startup brand. A few years ago, we tried a thing called Pivot that were basically 12 steps. So, so Michael, you're going to use Hoots, you're going to tweet, you're going to use Hootsuite, you're going to put your LinkedIn post, you're going to put your Facebook post, you're going to do the this, the that, the newsletter and Mailchimp and uh, and 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 so on. And if you stick with it it's the consistency and and unfortunately um that startup brand didn't meet my expectations and and we stuck with it about two years people don't want to pay for that but doggone it michael it works <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you're doing you're validating <laughs> it it does and you have to you have to constantly have information but but information that people want to consume that's in that they keep putting in front of them because as the adage goes out of sight out of mind and so you really want to be front and center so when somebody is ready to buy or they are ready to look at uh, whatever you're trying to sell you really need to to have yourself out there and then it's also not just building your presence you have your personal brand as a person uh, so I push pretty heavy on the thought leadership side but then you also do. on your company brand as well on like, what is your company doing? How, what problems are they solving? How you're going about being able to, um, you know, educate people and, and tying back in the thought leadership piece. So I, I try to try to do a, a, a good job at, at that to make sure that I, I isolate. So I'm not doing a sales pitch on the thought leadership side uh, and vice versa, making sure that um, even if we're selling that organizations realize like we're trying to solve problems for them, not just, trying to sell them another, another widget, per se. Yeah, and it, it looks like you have, uh, again, I'm off screen, folks, looking over here, but it looks like you have um, a daily cadence of some type. Now, it may be 
it may not be an article you wrote, it may not be a webinar you're hosting, but you comment in on a lot of people and it, it looks like, is that fair to say about a daily cadence up on LinkedIn? Yeah, usually I'll, I'll also comment or on somebody else's uh, post. So my goal is to add to what other people are saying as well. That way it's not just about me and I'm looking at what other people are doing and even simple stuff like liking something that I see or when I go read it just because it's, you know, hey, if I'm I'm looking at it, I should acknowledge that somebody else is also putting out good content too. So it's not just about me or uh, my company. It's also about returning the favor in the reciprocal way to acknowledge other people that are also doing the same thing because it's all about the broader ecosystem of people being able to provide information and helping to solve problems and, and really just, you know, hey, what, what, what are you doing to help the world as a whole and even simple things like, you know, being able to give some, you know, some, some expert opinion on something or reply to something and say, hey, this is how I think about it. This is what my opinion is. Uh, it goes a long way too to be engaged in conversation with others out there, especially in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, you know, we've talked in past months about some recent uh, contracts you've been awarded. We don't have to go there. Folks, go search up on the channel and you'll see those interviews. So, the point I want to make is um, you're a busy dude, and for you to dedicate this kind of time, it tells myself, the listeners, and your followers, uh, this is important to you, is, is, is what I'm taking. This takes time, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and before I hired on a marketing director, I was doing all of it myself. So it's a, you have to be very committed. <laughs> you have to make sure that you're able to put out the right content. but even myself as you as you alluded to I, i'm very busy it's very difficult to keep a cadence up so you for a time you'd see like a lot of things come out all at once and then there'd be a lull you know of a few weeks and then some more out so now that i actually have somebody dedicated on the marketing front it's pretty awesome because that's really where you're able to start cranking up not only your visibility but also being able to make sure that you're having touch points other places too so since we brought her on board, I've been able to write a piece for TechCrunch. I have some other pieces coming out too. Um, and so she's been instrumental in getting us in to also be able to continue to expand on the, the, the thought leadership side. So I would say, you know, it's it's not cheap to bring on a marketing person or even you know, build out a marketing team, but it is definitely worth the investment uh, because it's going to pay back over time when you're at, you know, you're pervasively everywhere out there where people are going, oh, I saw you over here, or I saw you over there. Um, and, and now that we don't have shows too, it's even more important. It's always been important, but it's even more important to leverage what you currently can. So I would say, even if you don't have the money to go hire on a marketing director, try to figure out ways to just keep up a cadence and put a system in place for yourself. So even if it's not every day, if you put something out every week, if you're able to be able to see if you can go check out, you know, different events you like going to, and maybe you have a topic that you want to present on, look for their CFP or call for papers, submit a talk. I just, you know, what, what's the worst they're going to say? No, and reject your talk. So, you know, think, think about those things too, um, because more often than not, you'll probably get picked up depending on the, the type of events. And there's even now show or virtual events now that are provide, doing call for papers that not necessarily did before, um, so you'll be able to do stuff like that. So I would say, or just ping somebody and say, hey, I noticed that you're starting to do presentations on meetups. I have some, some, I have a topic that I like to talk on. Would you be interested? And you'll find out if they are or not. But again, putting out feelers to start targeting places where you can start building a presence is going to be critical. And then really, even even before you do that, think about what you want to become a thought leader in. Because yeah. whatever you're trying to do on the business side to differentiate yourself, you should be doing the same thing to educate people on why you're differentiating yourself as an MSB. And so thinking around that, because if you if you know what that is, then you can easily build thought leadership content around that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. That That's a whole another interview uh, is, is, you know, I've built my career on basically niching. And and I like niching because I, I have domain expertise and I, I can babble for hours, um, which we're not going to do today. Uh, but your uh, two, two, two final thoughts. One is um, when you talk about the cadence, folks, consider uh, one of our other contributors, Dennis 
Wilson um, uses social selling and he does it pretty well in a similar vein to Michael. And Michael, what he'll do, and it's Dennis, so you know it's him. And he'll do it on a Saturday. He'll load up Hootsuite with a cadence of uh, Facebook posts and LinkedIn posts and, and and tweets. So you do that in a couple hours on a Saturday, right? Just line up the week, and and then it goes to autopilot. So that's one consideration. Hey, finally, so uh, you, you have a nice little polite image. Love the artwork. It says refractor. A pipeline building webinar on uh, August 4th, 2020, 10 a.m. Pacific. Quickly, um, you have a guest, Bill Munyon. Uh, what's the story? What's what's the webinar? Yeah, so we integrated Center for Internet Security Syscat Assessor. So it's a tool for benchmarking against infrastructure. So if you want to run a CIS benchmark, you can run their tool to get an assessment against Windows or Linux and so on. And so we're going to do a session, a working session, to not to show how their tool works, but also how it can be effectively run against uh, existing infrastructure. And so that's the the basis of that com or that that webinar. And the other piece of it too is we just launched a hybrid, or I should say, an on-premise uh, runner. So now all of our uh, any content you build on the platform, including with Syscat, you could run on-premise too. And so we're getting a lot of requests around wanting to run it against existing on-premise infrastructure so we'll also touch on that as well so it's really pretty awesome because we're we're um you know we're when bill bill is like the the architect of syscat or the original builder of syscat so uh he's, he's going to be an awesome guest on on this webinar as well all right it all starts at refractor.it that's dot it i'm assuming that's not for italy but that's for information technology <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> all right well hey wash your hands uh enjoy the heat wave and uh before you know it we're going to be talking to possibly uh as, as we turn the corner into fall so have a nice summer my friend thanks harry thanks for having me on appreciate it yeah.